In recent weeks, reports of a mysterious respiratory illness have taken the U.S. by storm, one that sickened at least 380 patients and turned fatal for seven. As health investigators from across the country begin to look into the issue, a common thread seems to be emerging, vaping. But medical studies are still in their preliminary stages, and there remains a severe lack of information surrounding the health effects of vaping. So what do we know so far? We reached out to Dr. Cristiani, a pulmonologist and molecular epidemiologist who reviewed and wrote an editorial about the most recent major medical reports on the vaping-related epidemic for the New England Journal of Medicine. The concerns about vaping are not new, and there have been case reports for some years now of adverse health effects, presumably from the additives, things like flavorants. I think what happens here is it's a much larger scale but before we dive into the theories of what's behind this vaping-related epidemic, let's break down how a vape works. Vapes, vape pens, e-cigarettes, whatever you want to call them, are essentially just battery-powered devices that heat a liquid into a vapor that can be inhaled. The vapor can contain flavoring and nicotine, but marijuana and hash oil are often used too. Preliminary studies have also found vapes to contain heavy metals like nickel, tin, and lead, benzene, which is a cancerous substance found in car exhaust, and ultrafine particles capable of traveling deep into the lung's tissues. Aldehydes, chemical compounds known to cause lung and heart disease, have also been found in vapes. And then, of course, there's nicotine. A preliminary 2019 federal survey found that more than a quarter of U.S. high schoolers have vaped in the past 30 days. Since nicotine is both addictive and harmful to brain development, the risk for this age group remains high. But now, with at least 380 confirmed cases of a mysterious respiratory illness in the U.S., the public is looking for answers. The first reported vaping-related death occurred in August 2019 in Illinois, and since then, six vaping-related deaths have been reported in California, Indiana, Kansas, Minnesota, and Oregon. What begins as coughing, chest pain, or shortness of breath can result in acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS. It's a highly dangerous and oftentimes fatal condition in which fluid accumulates in the lungs, preventing oxygen from circulating in the bloodstream. But that's only one part of the story. Unfortunately, the chemistry is complicated. The toxicology looks like it's lung injury, but the pattern is heterogeneous. Because it's a heterogeneous group of disorders, it does suggest that there may be more than one agent involved because the response looks quite varied. But it's, in, the, in all cases, it's much more accelerated than you'd expect in a chronic inhalation problem. And this acceleration may be a result of changes in the formulation of vaping agents. It's a much higher level of acuity, suggesting that the source material has changed in the last year or so. A major suspect is vitamin E acetate, which is a thickening agent used to adjust THC levels. Health officials in New York State issued a report stating that they had found very high levels of vitamin E in samples from 34 patients who had fallen ill in the state many who reported buying marijuana for vaping purposes. Vitamin E acetate is an oil. Some of the cases indeed had what we call lipoid pneumonia. That could happen if someone were just were inhaling Vaseline type product. But if you look carefully at the report, which was not a peer reviewed report, they said eight out of 34 reported using vitamin E acetate in their mixture. So that's a minority, a substantial minority, it means vitamin E acetate has to be one of the many compounds investigated, and it may well explain one or so of the outcomes, but it's not the whole picture. I think it's premature. So yes, more research is needed, but how close are we to getting a diagnosis? I think it's going to take some time. That's why I think it's prudent to advise people as both physician and as public health specialists not to vape because we don't know what it is. Even with a very large concerted effort, the number of potential culprits is large. Dissecting the chemistry of this may reveal compounds that haven't been adequately tested in humans or animals, so we don't really even know the extent of the inhalation toxicity. And this is because e-cigs remain largely unregulated in the U.S., both in stores and out. In fact, FDA approval of the products is slated to begin in 2022, but in light of recent fatalities, that may change. While vaping is growing in popularity with more than 40 million users worldwide, it's worth mentioning that not every country is experiencing this epidemic. That might be because e-cigarettes aren't as strictly regulated in the U.S. like in other countries. In Australia, for example, e-cigs containing nicotine are banned altogether. And in countries like the U.K. and France, regulations are stricter. 
To remedy this situation, the FDA is currently working on a plan to remove flavored e-cigarettes from the market altogether. I just think you know, we need accelerated research. This is uh, it's not the first time something dramatic has happened that, that requires a concerted response on the part of the science community, public health community, and actually manufacturers to the extent that they can be brought in uh, to you know, help figure this out. If you like this episode, let us know down in the comments below. And if you're curious about other medical conditions, check out Six latest video here. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.